Hi friends. Happy Tuesday night. It is our final dream team chat for October and kind of have been loving the series that Brie and I have been um, bringing to you guys this month because we're just talking about like our best business tips for you guys. So we have gone through lots of different um, best tips and lists of things, things to share, um, how best ways to share, best ways to uh, invest in your business. And tonight we are rounding out the month um, with best tips to make it easier for your customers. Okay. We have six quick tips for you guys. And I want to say that all six of these tips really um, highlight the fact that we are aiming to bring value to our customers. Okay. And when we say that we want to bring value to our customers, that means that we want to give our customers something or oftentimes multiple things that they're connecting with us on, that they are, um, finding value in the things that we're saying. And that can look different to multiple different people. And in fact, the way that you work your business, you're going to be um, connecting with different customers on different things and they're gonna find those different things valuable. So for example, things like making it easy to order for your customers or providing tips and tricks for your customers or simply for just being a good consultant and replying back to text messages, answering phone calls, being attentive to their time. Okay. All of these things come in the form of value. And so it's our job as consultants to kind of be well-rounded in the ways that we provide value to our customers. Okay. The goal is to make it easier for our customers. So that way it is enjoyable to shop with us. We are providing customer service that makes them want to stay loyal to us because we are working on building that connection and providing great customer service, okay? Customer service is what's going to take your business to the next level. It's what's going to allow your business to stand the test of time. If you don't have good customer service, it will all eventually fall flat because the customers you have are the bread and butter of your, of your business, Without your customers, you don't have a business. And so it's very important that we provide value in um, as much as possible and in as many ways as possible. And we want to make it easier for our customers. Okay. So we have six tips. I'm going to go with the first three. Um, they might be quick. There are some um, areas for us to expand, but for the most part, these are straightforward things that we have talked about um, in the past, but altogether they've made it to a list of top tips that we think make it easier on your customers to be purchasing with you. So tip number one, and this is one that I love that I figured out uh, because it's made it so much easier for me. And that is to develop an order system for your customers, okay? develop an order system. And now the way that I'll explain how I do may not work for you. You might want to do something different, but it will give you an idea of what I talk about when I say develop an order system, okay? We want to make it as easy as possible for our customers to order. They don't know how to order unless we teach them how to order, okay? So by developing an order system, that means you are being very clear to your people on what they need to do so they can order, okay? So there are many ways that I do this in my business, so I'm just going to start listing them, okay? For the most part, I close party orders on Mondays, okay? That's when Sensi launches products for the most part. I can spend time over the weekend collecting orders and finalizing stuff. So that is where I'm collecting bulk orders, um, on a very regular basis and I'm closing them on Mondays. It didn't used to be every Monday. It used to be every two weeks, every three weeks as I was beginning. And then as I grew my customer base, I was able to close parties more regularly. So I close a bulk order or a party order every Monday. And so in that, I am consistently telling my customers in my VIP group, in my stories when I'm talking, in my follow-ups, I'm closing an order on Monday. Let me know if you need it, okay? So I have a day that I close my orders and then also I'm letting them know I have an order, okay? And then so I tell them how to give me their order. So in my VIP group, as I'm showcasing things, I'll say, drop a snow emoji in the comments to order this blue frost warmer, right? Drop a pizza emoji or drop a, a popcorn emoji if you want this new um, 
marquee warmer, right? And so all they have to do is drop a comment on the post and they know that I'm gonna send them a message and I'm gonna finalize their order through the message, okay? Same with my follow-ups and text messages. I'm checking in on an order or I'm checking in on their stash and I say, I have a local order closing Monday. I'll send you my link to browse around. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? So I have developed an order system for my customers to either be giving me their list of orders to enter on my order on Monday, to be commenting so I can enter their order for them or finalize their order, right? And I'm saying it to where I'm training them to know, oh, she probably has an order on Monday. Oh, I sent her my list last time, so I'm sure I can just send her my list this time, right? Okay, so I do that. And I also send out fun mail to my customers. So if you are not local to me, if I'm not delivering your stuff, my customers know if they go to shop on my site, they're going to get fun mail in the mail as a thank you. Okay. That is an order system that I have trained them to look forward to, to anticipate and to rely on it being there. Okay. Because I, I, um, honor my word. When I say that I'm going to send fun mail, I send fun mail every single time. Okay. So my customers know that, yeah, I'm not delivering their orders, right? They see me delivering other customers orders, but they know that even though I'm not delivering their orders, I'm still going to send them something in the mail. That is an order system that I have developed that has worked really, really well for my customers. My customers don't have to wonder how do I order, they don't have to wonder if I'm still a consultant. They don't have to wonder what my website is because I am making it a point to tell them how to order, okay? It is such a benefit to your business because it gives you the confidence to move. It gives you the, the direction to go and collect orders and you know what you're going to say because you're going to try to be closing orders every Monday or every Friday or every other Monday, every other Friday, right? It gives you more direction. And then implementing something like fun mail or a postcard or a handwritten thank you note or an email after an order, that is an order system that you can develop, okay? And then when we're talking emails, I'm hyperlinking things, right? So it's like, look at these pretty products, click here to shop. Look at these products, click here to shop, okay? Again, making it very straightforward to my customers, giving them exactly the rules and direction that they need to shop. So develop an order system for your, for your business, okay? This helps your customers. It also helps you a lot too, okay? Okay, tip number two is reach out to your customers, meaning don't wait for them to come to you, okay? You will have customers that love their Scentsy so much, they're going to seek you out and text you and give you an order, and that's awesome. Wine and dine those customers, love that relationship, so good. That is going to be the minority of your customers, okay? Most of your customers are busy. They are not obsessed with Scentsy the way that you are yet, okay? They are moving and grooving, doing their own thing. They are not always thinking about Scentsy, OK, this is why it's important to have a presence to your customer base so they see you. This is why it's important to have an order system so they know how to order. But also as the consultant, it is your responsibility to be reaching out to your customers. We talk about this all the time. It is so important to be following up with your customers and reaching out to them. Do not just rely on social media posts or emails to collect sales for you. They do oftentimes with hot items or big sales and that's cool, but your everyday business is built on customer connection and relationship and you checking in with them. You have to reach out to your customers. Do not let the fear or those internal thoughts of, oh, I'm bothering them, um, stop you from following up with your customers. Good consultants check in with their customers and you are a good consultant. So you are going to want to develop a follow-up system, okay? We talk about this a lot. There's many different ways that you can follow up with your customers regularly. You're gonna have to find the system that works for you and that you will do, okay? So there's the Sensi Connect app. It's free, it links to your workstation. It gives you push notifications of who you need to follow up with, shows you their orders, it's great. Also, <clears throat> under the reporting tab, under my customers, there's a sales report. 
no, I'm sorry, a reorder report that you can um, change the filters of like any customer who hasn't ordered in one month or two months or three months or whatever you want. And it will list those customers with their name, their phone number, their order. And so that's a really great way to follow up with your customers as well. And there's a million other ones. There's binder methods and pen and paper and forms and all the stuff that you could do. But checking in with your customers is so important. At a minimum, go to your order history tab, scroll down, check in with all your customers, okay? There's never a, a time where it's too long ago to check in. Um, there's never a, such thing as too good of customer service. So definitely check in, ask questions, be personable, and you have to reach out. You cannot um, just rely on them coming to you because you will not get the sales and the reorders that you need to continue your business. You want to wine and dine your customers to where then they are coming back on a regular way. Okay. If you're not reaching out, then you're having to search for new customers month after month, which we need to do, but we want to retain as many customers as possible. Okay. Number three, before I pass it off over to Bree. Um, my tip is to organize your customers' information well in the workstation, okay? Um, this means every time that you are placing an order for a customer, make sure you get as much information as you can. Their name, their address, their email address, their phone number, um, and enter that when you're entering their order so you have a profile for them on your workstation, okay? This makes it easier to follow up with them to track their orders if they're having any warranty issues or they really loved that red bar that they ordered last time. It makes it very um, simple for you to go find them and see their past orders and figure out um, and help serve them better, okay? Also, it's just good to have correct information on file, okay? For all the reasons above and also for email purposes, um, for networking purposes, um, it's really important to keep your customer's information. Um, and you can even take it further. I'm just gonna walk through it as I say. You can go to the contacts section of your workstation and go to the, your contacts homepage and you'll see all the names that you entered as you're collecting their um, information for like their first initial order. And from there, you can apply tags to your customers. I think this is really great. Um, I have tags for like my local customers, customers who do my monthly boxes. I have tags for customers that I've met at certain events. Um, I have customers who have purchased fan products before. And this makes it really easy for me to send an email to all my local customers or to remember, oh, I met this person at the Breakfast with Santa event I did last year, okay? Um, so I love that you can customize it with um, tags. You can also do really cool things like add their Facebook URL. So like if you message them on Facebook all the time, you can add their messenger URL to where you can just click that and it will pull up Facebook Messenger, which is cool. Um, and then you can add notes too. So sometimes I'll do notes, especially people I meet at events or a home party or something. Loved silver bells, used to be a consultant back in the day, blah, blah, blah. That way when I'm following up, I have some reference points as well. All of this stuff is going to help you be a better consultant for your customers. It's going to help you better serve them. It's going to help you be able to recommend things to them. It's going to give you a better timeline for your follow-ups, right? Um, and then the features of the tags are just really cool to be able to better organize how you want to contact them. Um, like, for example, like I have my Breakfast with Santa event coming up again. And so I'm going to email all of my past um, contacts from the Breakfast with Santa to let them know that I'll be back again this year. So little things like that, by keeping their information organized, makes it very helpful for you to provide amazing customer service. Um, and again, makes it easier for your customer to work with you and then you to be able to serve them. So those are my three tips. And then Bree, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm going to kind of Y'all don't know this, but I'm going to move this around a little bit and I'm going to take what we're going to say last and move it up because the rest of them, I think, fall under this category. And so I want to hit on this first. Um, so number four is going to be upselling and or knowing your bundles. 
Okay. So as a new consultant, this can be one of the first things that you can really use your catalog and use the, um, the website to help you with this, but the opportunity to add something else for a better price or add something else for a good deal, or just add something else for ease of, um, use with their products is always there, right? Your customers already know about the buy five, get one free. So now they've got six bars. They said, I want these six bars. Are you going to ask them if they need some cotton cleanups to go with it? Right. Or if you take it back and your customers don't know about the buy five, get one free. If my customer is ordering, if they give me three bars, I'm asking, do they want to add, if they want to buy two more and get one free and get six total. Right. Um, if my customers are getting two bars, I'm saying you want to add one more and you save a dollar on all three of them. Right. Knowing your bundles, how they function, how much money it saves um, and then getting used to offering that to your customers. And again, it goes back to getting over the hump in your head where you feel like you're being salesy or you're bugging them somehow or whatever. I, I know that we can all tell ourselves some weird things about having conversations with our customers. And this may take you a little bit to get used to, and it may take you a little bit to implement. But the reality of it is, is that if there's a better deal in it, I want to know. I can still say no, right? For example, I went to Verizon a couple weeks ago to upgrade my phone and the guy sitting there telling me about all these deals, right? All these things that I can get if I just did this, if I just changed my plan, if I just spent an extra $5 a month, Right. Some of that I took advantage of, some of it I didn't, but I had all of the information in front of me. And so as a consultant, when you're looking forward to your business and you're saying, how can I be the best consultant for my customers? Doesn't it make sense to give your customers all the information that's pertinent to their purchases? Um, and, and that's going to take reminding. That's going to take having to offer that multiple times. Um, and I would say offer it every single time. There's no reason not to. Your customer may forget that there's a buy five, get one free. So if your customer is sending you a list of five bars, you say, add one more. It's free. You pay the same price or if they're buying four, right? So, um, and same for most of our warmers, right? Up until a certain price point, any of our warmers can be bundled with three bars and it's a really great deal. Why wouldn't you offer it to them, right? You gotta ask yourself, why wouldn't I do this? Are you afraid of the no? Okay, we gotta get over that. That's a hump you have to get over. It's something you have to work through. And the only way to work through it is to hear it. The only way to work through it is to, to um, continue to do it, right? So um, knowing what your upsell opportunities are and knowing your bundles, studying the catalog, and, and I don't mean like sitting down for an hour a day and just like studying the catalog, but make sure that you have catalogs handy. If you have some free time, if you're sitting at your desk, if you're sitting in the line and looking through catalogs, if you're trying to figure out what you're going to order on your next order, flip to that um, bundle page and just take a glance at it, right? Go on to your PWS and go to the bundles. Or if you go to any of the product pages, they put the bundle and save options right there, right? So just knowing what's available and also knowing what's not available anymore. For instance, um, the buy five, get one free bundle is still available despite it not being on the website anymore. Did you know if you add six bars to your cart on your personal website, it's going to automatically bundle. Sensi is trying to make it easier for customers to recognize that there is a deal in place and taking out the middleman of having to choose that bundle and save option. And it just, the system automatically doing it for them. That's not the case for everything. Okay. They also discontinued the opportunity to get six license bars or three license bars, right? So we can no longer bundle license bars, not the end of the world. Okay. Not the end of the world, but you wouldn't know that unless you were paying attention, right? Unless you were looking at your catalog and looking at your website. And so as a consultant, that is part of your job is to know what's available to your customers and to offer it often. Okay. So moving on to number five, these last two are kind of in that same realm of upselling, but also obviously making it easier and being the best consultant. But I will say these two things, in my opinion, are kind of... Um, optional. Uh, these are not things that you have to do. Okay. These are just things that you can, in my opinion, going above and beyond in a lot of ways, um, because with the idea of making it easier on your customers, it is 
that area where especially this time of year, people are looking for ease, okay? People are getting in the spirit of Christmas shopping. Some people are, you know, halfway through their Christmas shopping. Some people are just now starting. Some people haven't even thought about it yet, but like trust and believe November probably will be a whirlwind and you're going to feel it on some level. If you are reaching out to your customers, if you are at all paying attention, you will see that your customers are in the mood to shop because they're buying for other people. So number five is going to be pre-made gift ideas and or bundles that you create or that you offer to your customers for ease of access for them while they're doing their shopping. Um, and it even just starts with your wording when you're talking about these things on your social media. So for instance, uh, I within the last like two weeks, I think when I'm posting about something, I'm kind of adding at the end of it, like this would make a really great gift for a coworker, or this would make a really great gift for um, the, the little one in your life or your little princess or whatever, right? Because I want my customers to start thinking about Christmas shopping or holiday shopping or whatever, if they haven't already. And, um, and if they are thinking about it, I want them to envision it, right? I want them to be able to see that and go, oh my gosh, yeah, that would that would make the perfect gift, right? Or yes, oh my gosh, I have a Christmas party on this date. I need a gift. Um, and so I am putting that nugget in their brain now. So with, when they're ready, these are already available to them and I'm gonna keep talking about it. Um, so the pre-made gift ideas and bundles, I actually created one just to kind of show you. Um, we've talked about this a lot before. This does not mean you go buck wild on your website or your workstation ordering all of the things to make 20 of these in hopes that you sell them all, okay? Literally today, me and Alex were talking about closing a party. What should we get with our host rewards? And it was like, okay, I'm gonna grab one of these and I'm gonna grab one of these so that I can put it together. I know that I can sell that one. If I can't sell it, I will use it. I will gift it to one of my kids' teachers, right? I'm thinking business-wise. But I want to, I personally, personally budget and make room for being able to have my own stuff for the most part, because my customers are used to my aesthetic, my hands, my house, my desk, my things. And so I want to stay true to that as much as possible. That does not have to be you. And again, optional. This is optional, but it is also very easy for you to look around at what you have and create bundles yourself um, or just talk about it, right? Do a selfie with a Santa hat from the dollar store and be like, these are the gift options that I have avail available for you. If you are a customer or if you are a consultant that is regularly sharing Sensi, your customers will be able to envision it that way too. It's not necessarily you have to have products in hand, though it's great to do do not go crazy. Okay. Do not go crazy. But I have this already because I am thinking about gift bundles. So I just threw this together. Okay. Cute little cat mug I got from Target, a room spray and a car bar. Okay. I have the pre-made gift bundle already. When I am ready to take pictures and showcase this, I will tell my customers, this is a perfect white elephant gift. This is a perfect gift for your kid's teacher. This is a perfect gift for your neighbor, right? Super affordable, 15 bucks, right? Gets you out the door, okay? Super cute, packaged, whatever. Creating those bundles, creating those gift options, having that option for your customers to not have to think about it. How easy is that? How often do you go into a store around this time and go for the pre-made already gift baskets or whatever that they have versus trying to come up with your own? right? That's such a pain sometimes. I sold 14 boo buckets where I literally put a buddy in there and some candy and the scent pack into Dollar Tree buckets and people went nuts over them. Why? Because they didn't have to think about creating a boo bucket for their kids. It was already done. They could have spent the extra $2 and did it themselves and bought the buddy, but, but they needed, they wanted somebody to already do it for them. Okay, your customers are not going to come out and say most of the time, some customers might ask you, and this is also another great thing to do is to say, I am here to make it easier on you. If you need gifts for somebody within a certain budget, price point, whoever, let me know. Again, it's letting your customers know you're open for business and that you can make it happen within the parameters of what they need, right? Give your customers permission to come to you when they have a need at, for 
anything right along the line. Um, but having that stuff available to be able to show or um, just speaking that consistently to your customers on social media, all of that stuff that you have the availability to be able to create the bundles, all of that stuff is is going to like prove so successful and so worthy this time of year. Um, but again, optional. If that sounds like something that is way over your head, if you're looking at your calendar and going, I can only, uh, at this point, I can only do like direct ship orders. I'm not shipping anything to my house. I can't take that on. Then don't do it. Don't do it. It's not necessary. Your customers do not know what they don't know. So if you are not offering it to them, they don't know that I'm offering it to my customers. Okay. So don't overwhelm yourself. Don't step into burnout knowingly because you think that this is a necessary part of your business because it's not. Okay. The last one, kind of piggybacking, same thing. Um, but this is also, this is something that you can try out in a different season like for real season, like spring or summer, try it out on your customers and get a feel for it, get a run for it where it's not such a busy season. Um, and that's boxes and or bags. Okay. So like Alex does her, um, Alex's box creations. I've been doing box by Brie um, for years. I think I started my second year of Sensi doing my box by Brie's. And it's literally like a whiff box which fun fact, if you're new here, the whiff box was literally an idea that came up a couple years ago and became a thing that Sensi got inspired by consultants who were doing their own creative boxes every month for their customers. So the whiff box was born out of inspiration from consultants, which is really cool. Um, and the whiff box, also a really great option to consistently promote um, because that takes your work out of it. It's a really great bundle to say, hey, you get, you know, however many full size products. It's a great price. It's always a good value. You get exclusive items like there is so much to brag on on the whip box and you don't have to do a dang thing but order it or tell your customers about it. And so if that is a better route for you, that's still PRV. That's still good customer service. And that's still um, going uh, doing a little bit more than just giving them the catalog. Right. But um, the boxes I know for me and Alex have been incredibly successful some months more than others. Like, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we have like three people who opt in. Sometimes we have 15 people opt in. It, it varies, right? And that that's just the way that it goes. But the great thing about offering boxes or bags that are special to you that you create is just that. It's special to you right? Yes, Alex does her own box. I do my own box, right? Um, but my customers, again, don't know that she's doing a box. And to them, they look around and go, well, this this is special. It's not in the catalog. Not anybody could order a box by Brie. That's special to my consultant. And that makes it really enticing. It makes it really, um, uh, it makes them want it more. And I'm offering full-size products. I'm offering my special touch. I'm offering my creativity. I'm offering my special theme, right? So all of those things mixed in, it provides a connection point for me and my customers for them to kind of get a little something, something that not everybody's getting because it feels exclusive. Um, and it also introduces them to other products that they may not be using on a regular basis, right? Because I'm not just throwing bars in a box and calling it a day. My boxes are filled with a variety of different items and it's based around a theme that I choose every month based off of whatever's going on, holidays, whatever. And I, I have an opt-in time. I have a price point that's been set and it's been the same. It has not changed. And I have customers who literally opt in every single month, every single month, right? So having that opportunity for one, the potential extra PRV, right? Because no matter what my PRV looks like, when that week comes around where I know I'm going to be talking about my boxes, that's a potential for X amount of extra PRV. However hard I want to work for that, however many people are going to opt in, that's just extra, okay? Um, and it provides me a creative outlet. I love putting them together. 
That might not be your speed, okay? That's where the whiff box is a great thing to fall back on. That's why it's there. Um, because since he literally said, we want to make this type of offering available to everybody, despite where you may feel like you lack creatively or you don't want to put in the work of buying the boxes and shipping them off and like all that stuff because it can get expensive. And so since he did that for you, so if that's your speed, then do that. But offering the boxes, the bags, whether it's all the time or seasonally, it creates a different connection and touch point for you and your customers. And it, prov it provides you an opportunity, um, which it literally is my favorite part to be able to introduce your customers to things that they are not currently using or that they don't know about. And that's huge to be able to, to widen their their lens on what Sensi has and the products that they may not even know that they would love is incredible from a business standpoint, right? If I can get them hooked on washer whiffs, that's huge. That opens up the entire laundry line opportunity. And that's a super consumable item. So I know probably at least once a month, they're ordering more washer whiffs, right? And then if I can throw in a hand soap, and I know that every two or three months, they're going to be ordering my, more hand soap, boom, right? Like literally possibilities are endless. And I'm not saying your customers are going to love every single thing you send them, um, but they don't know what they don't know, right? So um, to me, the boxes and the bags, whether you do it seasonally or you do it all the time, is a way for you to provide that kind of like extra touch of a uh, consultant to customer relationship, right? Um, the reality that we are just one of a couple hundred thousand consultants doing this business, which it's not a competition by any stretch of the imagination. I don't feel that way. Uh, but the reality of it is, is that people can go on Sensi.com and pick any consultant, right? We're all selling the same thing, which is really great. But when you look at your business and say, how do I want to stand out? How you treat your customers, how you show up for them, how you provide customer service, i.e. making it easy for your customers to be a customer of yours is going to be the difference in them staying loyal to you, right? Loyalty is a big thing. Like it's not a competition, but when I get a customer, yeah, I want them to continue to buy from me when they have needs. I don't want them to go searching for another consultant because I missed the mark on something um, that they were looking for customer service wise, basic, basic, right? Because again, I'm telling you that your customers don't know that I have a monthly box that I do that you don't, right? Your customers don't know that. But if you are not following up with them, like Alex was talking about, if you're not creating that connection and they're going, oh, well, I haven't heard from the lady that I bought from. And I, I don't even remember her name. I guess I'll just go on Sensi.com and find another one. Huge miss, right? You've, you've missed the opportunity for that customer service um, that customer service note of following up with your customers, being intentional about reaching out to them and making sure that you are at the forefront of their mind when they think Sensi. Is it going to happen all the time? Probably not. No, I've, I've, I know I've lost customers before and it is what it is. But are you doing everything you can within the parameters of what you can do? Okay, and it, and it's just about being better. Okay. Been in this business for seven years and I'm still not the best that I can be as a customer, as a consultant. I know I have things I need to work on. I know I can always be better. And so it's not something that you one day will arrive at. It's just something that you slowly start to add in and you go, okay, I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to make it my own and I'm going to get better at this. Okay. Now I want to work on this area and things change. So uh, social media changes, technology changes. So we just have to kind of move and groove and you staying connected to your customers allows you to stay connected to the one of the main points that matters in this business, which is your relationships with your customers. Okay. So those are our six tips for making it easier for your customers and in turn being the best consultant you can be. Um, and so we hope that this information was super helpful for you and you go on to rock your business.